Um, hello, 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 hello. Welcome to another very, very exciting edition here on Fifi Manfred um, on YouTube. It's our afternoon section, like we said earlier on. We're always going to give you the morning section, the afternoon section, and of course, we'll keep you updated here. There are lots of updates there, but of course, we give you the best ones. We make sure we dissect the issues for you. We analyze them um, every way, practically, whichever way it's important that we do that. Providing football education is important. And we do that here on Fifi Manfred on YouTube. Thank you very much for choosing us. If you are new to the community, hey guys, thank you very much for choosing me. It's an honor. Again, if you um, are new, make sure you subscribe to the channel and then you turn on notification and do turn um, do turn on your notifications and do choose all. It's important that you do so. When you do so, if you are old, make sure you turn on notification as well. Share for other new members to be on because you love the channel. That's exactly why you are here. So share, share, share. Let other guys come on board on the channel. Let them come and enjoy exactly what you are having. My name is PV Manfred on YouTube. Let us get into um, the nitty gritty of the conversation. So, this morning, I started something very um, intriguing. And I wish to go back to it again. And, and for me, I want to start with FC Barcelona. Uh, because everything that Barcelona has gone through in recent times... Uh, with respect to the kind of young players that have come up have come from the La Masia, has been worrying. Uh, you look at players like Ansumani Fati, you look at Yamin Yawal, who got injured a while ago, Pedri and Gavi. Um, I don't know if maybe Basa aren't doing a good job at La Masia in terms of physically preparing these players um, to come through and play at the highest level, or it is just that um, these players are just being unlucky. But for the case of Pedri, you would agree with me that someone like Pedri, his injury essentially is because of the fact that he has had some accumulated fatigue. Pedri started playing for Barca um, just when he broke onto the scene. He played, went to play for um, the Spanish La Roja, went on to play for the Spanish Olympic team. And he played consistently for a very long time. A lot of games in a short time for the young Spaniard. And in my opinion, that definitely will lead to some form of accumulated fatigue. And sure. He's expected to get injured at some point in time. And I think it's something that they ought to look at. You look at these things and you look at people um, um, like Pedri and the possibility of the fact that Barca are going to play and the money just like Juan Laporte. No Juan Laporte, but he gets played that by this like Hansi Flick. Uh, Juan Laporte may be going in for a manager like Hansi Flick, who acts as made for us to cover even a lot more ground. It means that regardless of the minutes that Pedri plays, he may be covering a lot of ground, running a lot of kilometers. In a particular game and when he goes to play in the spanish um, national team as well it's going to be seen so for a young player doing all of that work obviously is going to put some strain and stress on his muscle i i think that barca and then the spanish royal federation have not handled um pedri well and that's exactly why we are where we are the injury that he has now is because he hasn't been handled well um, he ought to have been handled well they ought to have handled that injury situation of pedri well but they didn't do that. Um, it has gotten to the situation where they have to find a way to make sure that he gets back fit again because it's an imp um, important player for Barcelona. And these players are just too much too young. As with Fatih, Gavi and Pedri, um, Yami Yawa at some point in time also had that issue. Um, in there yesterday, he also took Frankie De Jong that also went off injured in there for um, the, 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 the Balgrana in the Spanish La Liga. Yeah, so it's a big deal. Of course, I disagree with everybody that says that, hey, Real Madrid were robbed yesterday. They were not robbed, in my opinion. There was no way you see Real Madrid were robbed. There was no way that was robbery. Because, see, you watch the game, how the game went through. Adelama, Ademestaya, both teams played well. Both teams had good chances. It was 2-2 in just 90 plus one minutes. That played eight minutes on the clock. Eight minutes on the clock. And once they played that eight minutes, the confusion was from the injury that Yakiti had had earlier on. The ball goes out right. The referee tries to blow the whistle. Um, Gail tries to blow the whistle. Stops in the middle of it. Then maybe recovers and believes, okay, now that the ball is mid-air. But once the ball wasn't on Jude Bellingham's head, and it was mid-air. So for me, there is nothing particularly wrong about what happened at the Mestaya. I think that Madrid were robbed. I mean, you yeah, are just cried foul. Everybody does that when they lose. Madrid wanted to win that game badly. And then um, 
they didn't end up winning. Um, maybe they ought to have done more in the game, in the, in the space of proper 90 minutes, to have won the game. Venetia Junior got two goals. I might know that they just have to keep on the momentum and they are going to win the Spanish La Liga this time. They are also in the Champions League. Um, they play in the next league against Leipzig at home. They are expected to win. Look at the games that Madrid has, the game that other teams have, the quality of Madrid next to that of Leipzig, the fact that Madrid were able to get a solitary goal away at Leipzig. Then they are coming home to the Santiago Banabao. Um, it's, it's, it's certain that Madrid have a fair chance at winning this than Leipzig um, winning, uh, uh, qualifying on the other side. So would, that's, those are part of the nitty gritties that are going on in there that we'll talk about also. Um, in the Italian Serie of course, International Milan have a game today. Um, it's an important game for them because Juventus lost to Napoli. And if you look at the, the Italian Serie A table, Inter knows that they need to just keep on winning and then they are going to be good in the Italian Serie. They are going to end up winning that trophy. It's a trophy that they've done very, very well in. And I just ran through by this. Um, once Juve lost by two goals one against Napoli, it's a huge result for Inter. Um, if they beat Genoa at home today, they can go 15 points clear of the Italian Serie A. Um, reminder that Inzaghi's side only lost once in the league this season with a goal difference of plus 55. That's pure quality from a team that's playing very well. Lost just once, goal difference of plus 55 in the Italian Serie A. If they win tonight against Genoa, they move themselves to levels of 15 points away from Juventus. That is about five games lost before Juve can catch them. There are about a lot more games to play in the Italian Serie A, but it puts them in a very, very poor position to go ahead and then win the Italian Serie A this season. Uh, over there. I was saying that I, although AC Milan won by a goal to zero over the weekend, I think that Stefan Pioli will come under a lot of pressure in the summer. Um, especially if Inter does win the league, there's going to be pressure on him to deliver. Um, AC Milan Chiefs will believe that after all the cutting down spending uh, from the sign group and then of course um, from Inter Milan and uh, letting the likes of Antonio Conte go, like Lukaku go, they seem to have gotten a winning formula that's working for them in finding a good manager. Do their rivals in the city will want to look for also a manager that can get them the trophies, that can make sure that it takes them to the levels. Uh, um, Stefan Pioli doesn't seem like he's the one after all the purchases that they've done. It's a quality team from AC Milan. If you look at players, um, Ruben of uh, Christian Pulisic, Samuel Chukweze, uh, quality from uh, Rangers in the middle of the park, uh, look at Pierre Kalulu. Lua Ficario tomorrow. These are our quality all throughout the field for international Milan, but they don't seem to be even getting closer to the Juventus, and that's a little worry that AC Milan may have, and that will put coach Stefan Pioli at the end of the season. That's why I said earlier that this summer uh, there's going to be a huge battle for managers. The summer, uh, the transfer window for managers is going to be a huge one because AC Milan are in a conversation. Juventus may be in there just for Italy, Leverkusen. Um, in there in, in Germany, Stuttgart, Bayern, go to Spain, Barca, possibly in there. Then it comes to English League, Newcastle, Chelsea, Man United. All of these teams possibly may have to change their managers in the summer, and it's going to be a huge managerial tussle all throughout um, their place um, in their summer for managers. So we'll have a look at all of those things um, if you are um, new to everything. That's AC Milan and then everything I do it. Of course, it's time for you to turn on notification and choose all um, in the comment section. I want to hear from you, so do so now as I consistently want to hear from you in the comment section. Again, um, there are lots of other stuff to go on and about and we'll talk about the Chelsea news as updates with Chelsea Football Club. Chelsea are chasing a particular manager. So this morning, like I told you, Chelsea Chiefs are not looking at sacking Mauricio Pochettino. And I've seen a lot of Twitter accounts say um, Baghdad and Bali doesn't know how he's doing it. And it's funny, it, 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 it's comical for people to believe that um, someone who um, has done an excellent job in terms of building a team, being quote-unquote a billionaire with a job that they've done, don't know what they are doing. The bigger problem with Chelsea is that everybody thinks that Chelsea should be winning now. But that can't happen because it's a new direction for the new owners. 
we know that in the past Chelsea used to win back to back to back or at least every other season and that's exactly what the new owners sought to correct they don't want to win every other season they don't want to win this season they don't win next season they win the next season they don't want that what they want is they want to be able to win consistently sustained form of success in the teams sustained form of success for the club and it's with every other place data based and oriented form of running the club from the women's um, side of the game to the juvenile side of the game and then of course the professional side of the game that seems to be um, um the direction the vision of the chelsea club that seems to be the part of the of, of of their plan that looks like more sustainable for them and that's exactly the part that um they are they are they are planning and for me i believe in it and that's why i think the Mauricio Pochettino uh, is the best man for the chelsea job as a stance now because for me you need somebody with a temperament that fits exactly what the owners want to do and at a point in time how they want to play um Chelsea have bought players that are going to take time to gel and then succeed. And I think that definitely they're going to get a job done. And um, yesterday, um, this morning, we are hearing that Chelsea are already in the market for something. I read this to you. Chelsea um, are, um, are looking for Brentford set piece trainer. Uh, Brentford are 15th in the league, but they've considered a less set of goals from set pieces. And of course, that is the job of Bernardo Cueva. Bernardo Cueva is the head of Brentford Scout and um, Set Piece Department. And Chelsea are looking at this character to be part of the Set Piece team. Um, in their mind, in 2015, Pep went for the a Set Piece coach for Brentford, who later became Arsenal's Set Piece coach. Then later, he, um, Hover, went on to go and take David Raya from Brentford and all of this thing. The game is um, more uh, uh, um, detailed and intricate these days. And Usually, when top quality people, top quality professionals want to make sure that they have certain areas that they are in charge of and they make sure that, of course, they leverage and then they turn things over, they make things work. And Chelsea, that, I think that that in itself, however, is another positive uh, move for the club where they have identified the area that can be improved. And I think that is great. Um, they are addressing it. Pochettino has certainly been directly involved in creating of a set piece department. And um, it's one of the things that. I, I think that Chelsea are doing very well and they ought to do. So um, definitely that's something that Chelsea are doing in there to make sure that they get the right things done um, over there as they go for it. Because it's important that you get somebody like Cueva in there for Chelsea and then later you make sure you build a very, very good sporting um, set piece department. The set piece department is an important part of every team and Chelsea are doing everything possible to get it done. Tomorrow, and on Wednesday, there are Champions League games. So we use this opportunity to preview all the Champions League games for you um, in there. So you stick and stay with me. Let us talk about all the Champions League games that we we'll have to talk about here on Fifi Manfred on YouTube. We'll go through quickly all the fixtures. And then, of course, we will take leave of you. Of course, you are going to put up some betting predictions in here. So you make sure you stick and stay. Then you can enjoy some of the predictions as well. Tomorrow, um, there's going to be the LCC Dad versus Paris and Joma. Um, Paris Saint-Germain, a very, very good side. Luis Enrique knows the Spaniard side. He knows exactly how they want to play. He knows how to get the best out of his players. Already also, uh, Skriniar, Kazawa, Kruzawa, Kimpembe are all injured. Whilst uh, Munoz, Odrizola and Fernandez are all also out for um, the also so that we are expecting that Paris Saint-Germain are going to go into 43. Mbappe should be back into the team with Bradley Bracola and Usman Dembele up top with Bettina, Manolo Gav and Manuel Zaha Emery. Um, as attacking is Mendes, Hernandez, Marquinhos, and Akini will make up the back for it's a team of Paris Saint Germain team that should be able to qualify from Sociedad. And of course, the big one tomorrow is uh, Thomas Tuchel's crazy day or the game that may be a make or break for him as FC Bayern Munich are playing against Lazio. Mind you, Lazio are up by a goal to zero, going away to go and play at Bayern. Uh, I still think that regardless of every other thing, Bayern are not going to lose this game. Uh, we hear that Jamal Mustaya. It's not going to extend its contract as FC Bayern Munich, but definitely um, this game is a big one for them. We are expecting that tomorrow the lineup is going to be Kim Jaimin, delayed Alfonso Davis, Joshua Kimmich going back to fullback, uh, Pablo Vich, Goretzka, Matias Kel, Mula, Mosiela, and then Harry Kane in there. Whilst for uh, Mauricio Sarri's team, it is Hesaj, Gila, Romanoli, Musak, uh, Murasic, Murasic, Provdel, Alberto, Kata. Uh, Luis Nicataldi, 
um, Bwendozi, Zakani, Immobile, and then and then Anderson up top to make it also a 4 3 3. I respect him that it shouldn't be a loss for um, FC by a mention in there. Then, of course, on Wednesday, also, there are lots of games we'll talk about that tomorrow. Hey guys, this is where we join the curtain on today's edition of PP Man. My name is PP Man. We talk about a whole lot of things. We watch here for me in the comment section. Subscribe to the channel. Turn on the